Originally this video was 7 NBA pairs who once hated each other, but now it's 6 because the video was just way too long. Hope you guys enjoy. Here are 6 NBA star pairs who once hated each other, but then became teammates later on. Some became teammates for good, others were teammates for a game, but overall this video served as a way to show that even if two players in the league despise each other, don't think they can't be teammates one day. Before I start with the video, I would love if you guys could drop a like on this video and subscribe if you are new, that would be very much appreciated. Anyway, at number one, Rajan Rondo and Dwayne Wade. <clears throat> oh, dirty plays that you've seen him play in the past, so that's, that's what it is. You've gone against Rajan in playoff settings for years. Hated him. The battles of the Heat and the Celtics once the big three came to existence in the East made this a rivalry. Both Wade and Rondo would play with their heart on their sleeve, and just so happened to be involved in a few altercations. But that all changed in 2016. Rajan Rondo and Dwayne Wade both joined the Chicago Bulls, and in the first press conference they announced that they had put their differences aside, and they were ready to become teammates. Your guys' history, I know that's part of the seat of the battle stuff, but what, did you guys touch on that or talk about No, that? we didn't touch on it, we just, you know, <laughs> we're, we're older, we're wiser, and uh, <laughs> we're moving forward. <laughs> Clearly they did, as they were able to play together, well, for a bit, before they once again had their differences and parted ways. During the 2016 season, Wade publicly traded verbal jabs with Rondo during a turbulent January stretch. Following a fourth quarter meltdown against the Atlanta Hawks, Wade cast the blame on every Bulls player not named Jimmy Butler. He said, and I quote, I don't know if they care enough. I can look at Jimmy and say Jimmy is doing his job. Jimmy can look at me and say Dwayne's doing his job. I don't know if we can keep going down the line and be able to say that. Rondo responded with a post on Instagram slamming Wade and Butler for complaining to the media rather than settling things behind closed doors, which is fair enough. He said, and I quote, My vets would never go to the media, he wrote. They would come to the team. My vets didn't pick and choose when they wanted to bring it. They brought it every time they stepped in the gym, whether it was in practice or a game. They didn't take days off. Rondo was obviously referring to the Celtics' big three, and with that, Rondo and Wade headed down different paths. On June 30th, 2017, Rondo was waived by the Bulls, and on September 24th, 2017, only three months later after trading Jimmy Butler and waving Rondo, the Bulls reached an agreement on a buyout with Dwayne Wade, and that was the end for the Rondo and Wade saga in Chicago. Number 2 Kobe Bryant and Ron Artest. What it's going to be like now to have Ron as a teammate after battling tooth and nail against him uh, in, in just some hatred battles over the years. What's it going to be like to have him as a teammate now? Well, it's even more fun in practice. Now, whilst these two players had altercations, I don't think there was ever any actual hate towards one another. Both Kobe and Meta have the same mental toughness and neither one was ever going to back down. Kobe understood that Meta was going to try and get inside his head and Meta knew that he couldn't back down no matter what crazy shots Kobe hit. Meta was the guy that you love to hate, but you love to play with. They had a few altercations and a lot of trash talk, but I mean, we're talking about Kobe Bryant here, and he used to trash talk everyone. So Meta was going to be no exception every time they played. But Kobe also simply didn't love him either. When Kobe talked trash, he would at least normally shake an opposition's hand. But with Artest, he even refused to shake his hand before the game. Ron Artest walked over to him, and Kobe did not even uh, acknowledge Ron Artest. He gave a... A slap on the hand to Mike Bibby and Brad Miller, but not Ron Artest. And this was before Artest was even at the Houston Rockets, going face to face with Kobe. So clearly there is no love there. But how he actually ended up playing for the Lakers and them being teammates is actually a very crazy story. Phil Jackson, the coach of the Lakers, tells this story of how the 2008 NBA Finals, where the Boston Celtics beat the Lakers four games to two. Phil Jackson said, and I quote, Ron Artest came into our locker room and walked in the shower with Kobe Bryant. Kobe's there taking a shower, and this is the locker room the coaches have. It's off limits. So Ron said, Coach, I can help your team. I can get that championship for the Lakers. I said, well, thanks, Ron. That's very nice. I appreciate your sympathies. We'll see what happens as you go through this year. Then he walked out of the coaches' area and into the shower and told Kobe the same thing. Now, first of all, yes, this story is crazy. But how in the world did Ron Artest actually even get in the Lakers locker room? I mean, he's not a part of the Lakers, and he's obviously not a part of the Celtics. And second of all, when Kobe tells this story, 
Even he doesn't know how he got in the locker room, which is pretty hilarious. Kobe said that after the Lakers lost in Game 6 of the 08 Finals, he was alone in the shower, just fuming. He heard somebody walk in and assumed it was one of his teammates, or maybe a staff member. Instead, he looked up and it was Ron Artest. To this day, Kobe has no idea of how Artest got into the locker room. Man, they'll tell you the story too, after we lost in the Celtics. Yeah. When he came in the locker room, I was in there all just by myself. He just came in the locker room and said, this is not going to happen to you. you know, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to help you out. Mm -hmm. you know? Something that we've both been trying to make happen for a while. Man. To be exact, Ron didn't really follow Kobe into the locker room. He followed him into the shower where Kobe had no clothes on. Shocked the hell out of him. <laughs> Peace and Brian eventually won a championship together in 2009 and 10 and became great friends. Hard to imagine from their start of their battles. Number 4 Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman. This is one where I think we all know by now. Scottie Pippen was a hard-nosed defender, and so was Rodman. Except Rodman wasn't just that. He was tenacious, vicious, and part of the bad boy Pistons who had one goal, and that was to stop Michael, Jordan, and win. Now, I could have made this topic Rodman and Jordan, but I chose Pippen, based on the story behind him joining the Bulls. Before Rodman and Pippen were teammates, Pippen despised Rodman. Yeah, Jordan didn't like him either, but he was mostly against Isaiah Thomas and Bill Lambier, who were the leaders of the Jordan rules and the bad boy Pistons. Pippen's feud was with Dennis. According to Dennis Rodman, prior to joining the Chicago Bulls ahead of the 95-96 campaign, Phil Jackson asked him to apologize to Scotty as a personal favor. I'm over to Jerry Cross's house. Phil Jackson was there, Michael was there, Scotty was there. Phil Jackson got to the point where he said, Dennis, the first thing I want you to do is go over and apologize to Scotty Pippen. I'm like, what? So I went outside and we talked for five minutes and stuff like that. It's kind of said, it's okay. Everything is fine, man. Don't worry about it. Went back inside Phil Jackson and asked me, Dennis, would you like to be a Chicago Bull? I said, I don't give a damn if I'm here or not. That was my answer. And then Phil Jackson said, congratulations, Chicago Bull. And that's how the deal got done. But in the end, the Zen Masters plan worked. They became teammates and they won three NBA championships with Rodman on the team. Number five, LeBron James and Lance Stevenson. No, Lance just a little dirty, that's all. We all know this beef, but how did it really begin? LeBron was shooting a technical free throw. Lance was stirring the pot off the bench, putting his hands on his neck, and as we all know, the Reggie Miller choke sign as LeBron would miss. At this point, Lance had not even logged a single playoff minute and was not even close to coming into the game. But even from the sidelines, he was making the Heat and LeBron very annoyed. According to Danny Granger, he said this. When I was in Indiana, and we had scuffles with the Miami Heat. Yeah, if you're only playing a few minutes a game, it's hard for you to go up and try to say something or, you know, make waves. But you can. Jawan Howard, Udonis Haslam, Chris Anderson, none of them playing in hardly any minutes in the playoff series, came to our locker room looking for Lance Stevenson. That's a big no-no. Right? It's a huge no-no. Yeah. Well, this was, this was on an off day. Right. I got involved in... You know, words were exchanged and whatnot, but, you know, it, it kind of, we stopped it and all. But the point I'm making with the story is the fact that that was the leaders on their team. They, those guys wasn't even playing a lot, you know, but they were protecting LeBron, you know, as far as they thought Lance had done something disrespectful to him, right. you know. Which time? What, I mean, <laughs> it was the choke, the, the choke situation right. when he did the choking sign on the right. sideline. Which is pretty crazy. In Game 4, LeBron went off, and in Game 5, Lance got his first minutes of the series, in which this happened, intentionally, and proved by the wink from Dexter Pittman into the camera, in the end, the Heat won the series, and LeBron got his ring. But what happened to Lance after that? Well, in 2013, this was Lance's breakout season with Granger getting injured. By the time the 2013 Eastern Conference Finals came along, Lance was ready, well ready to irritate LeBron, because clearly he didn't learn anything from 2012. In Game 4 with Paul George in foul trouble, Lance begged his coach to let him guard LeBron. And we know what happened next. He stared him down, got in his head, and made him foul out of the game, in which the Heat would eventually lose, whilst Lance finished with 20 points himself. And that's pretty much the end of 2013. The Heat went on to win the series and back-to-back -back championships, but 2014 was the big one. Lance and the Pacers have both stepped up, and they were better than the year before. In fact, the Pacers had a better record than the Heat, and the rivalry was even bigger. Game 1 went to Indiana, Game 2 went to the Heat, but all people talked about was Lance flopping every time LeBron James touched him. Game 3 had LeBron finally show some irritation towards Lance. By Game 5, the paces against the wall, Lance turned into Psycho Lance. He joined the Heat huddle and the famous blowing in the ear incident, which Larry Bird, who was the president of the paces, had had enough. He spoke to Lance after the game. 
Although his antics were crazy, did they work? Well, LeBron went for a career playoff low of 7 points. So maybe Lance was onto something here, as Indiana won. So in Game 6, Lance did what he said he'd do and tone it down a bit. But he still had some incidents. He managed to teabag LeBron underneath the basket. He returned the favor and touched LeBron's face, which he didn't like at all. Anyway, the Heat went on to win the series and Lance paid his respect to LeBron via Instagram. So, was that the end? Well, not quite. After LeBron joined the Cavaliers for the second time, and Lance bounced around to five different teams before reuniting with the Pacers, this beef was back. On November 1st, 2017, Lance slapped LeBron in his sausage and beans area. And then a few months later, Lance got in LeBron's head, which made him shove Lance and call his play dirty after the game. No, Lance just a little dirty, that's all. Later that year, Lance and LeBron once again battled in the playoffs. Lance hit him again and again, and the Cavs lost the game. Bron responded with 46 points in the next game, and by game 4, it was the same old battle. The hits, the bumps, the trash talk, and caused LeBron another tech foul. And he responded with a buzzer beater and 44 points in game 5. The Cavs ultimately won the series, and that's pretty much it. Hard to imagine though that these two players became teammates, but hey, LeBron James left to join the Lakers and Lance followed him. Number 6. Charles Barkley and Scottie Pippen Looking to put the Charles Barkley Pippen feud behind them. Even if you don't like a guy, you don't have to uh, kill him publicly because nobody wins in that situation. These two weren't exactly the closest of rivals, and even teammates when they eventually joined forces. When these two players played against each other, it was a competitive rivalry. Some light pushing and shoving, some trash talk, just a good rivalry. Then, in 1998-1999, Pippen was traded to the Houston Rockets, alongside Barkley, his former Olympic teammate. He was also teamed up with Hakeem, but there were chemistry problems right off the bat, especially with Barkley. And in 1999, when Pippen left the Houston Big 3 fail to go to the Portland Trailblazers, the six-time NBA champion said he wanted to get away from Barkley's selfish and sorry fat butt. I wanted to get Charles Barkley an apology at gunpoint, so he could never expect an apology. If anything, he owed me an apology for coming and play with his sorry fat butt. He's a very selfish guy. Uh, he doesn't show me the desire to want to win, and uh, I probably should have listened to Michael a year ago when he said that Charles never will win a championship because he doesn't show any dedication. So yeah, I'd say the two probably aren't the closest of friends. And even before they were teammates, they always had a little bit of a rivalry anyway. And number 7. Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas. You're probably wondering, when in the hell did these two play together? And for this final one, I'm making an exception. The All-Star Game. Because the feud between these two players is arguably the biggest hatred in NBA history. Back when Thomas was the star point guard of the Detroit Pistons, the bad boy squad, he had a rough relationship with Michael. On the court, and both off the court too. It all started from the bad boy Jordan rules, which was led by Isaiah Thomas himself. These Jordan rules weren't just there to stop Jordan, they were there to hurt Jordan. Jordan would use every setback, every insult, and every instance of disrespect as motivation to go out and destroy his opponent. He never forgot his all-star game as a rookie. It was on this stage that Isaiah Thomas allegedly calls for a freeze-out game on Jordan. It was here that MJ started his distaste for the Piston point guard. I'm actually going to make an entire video on that topic, so stay tuned for that. And if you want to see that, be sure to leave a like. But the freeze-out game is where the hatred started. In 1991, however, things changed. The Pistons and the Bulls met in the Eastern Conference Finals once again, and the Bulls swept the series before winning the first of what would be three consecutive championships. The Pistons refused to shake the Bulls' hands, which was led by, once again, Isaiah Thomas. Four months later though, the greatest team that was ever assembled in the 1992 Dream Team was being selected, and in the book, when the game was ours, Magic Johnson relates that he, Jordan, and other players conspired to keep Isaiah off the Dream Team, and so when the Dream Team was being put together, Jordan said he would only play if Isaiah was not on the team. Alright, no Isaiah qu Thomas No Isaiah stuff. Thomas questions. Cool. The feud is basically over now as they're both retired. Apart from the fact that Isaiah chooses not to acknowledge Jordan and at points has disrespected him on live television. The fact that these two players could have such a seeming hate for one another both on the court and off the court is pretty outstanding. That is why when Jordan and Isaiah played on the same team every All-Star game, it could not have been weirder. 
Each and every year, seeing them as teammates from 1985 to 1993 simply because this was a personal beef, not on the court beef. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram to see what I get up to, be sure to follow my Instagram. And let's see if we can reach 1,000 likes for the next video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos. And I am out. Peace.